Hello. In this session, we're going to cover some of the security settings that are available in Acrona Cyber Protect Cloud within a protection plan. These security settings require an agent to be installed on the device. And you'll see uh, some of these actually require an advanced pack. Um, some are included with the core agent, but you'll notice with the green up arrow, if you hover over that, this is part of the advanced security plus EDR. Um, so you'll notice that as I move through the protection plan. Now, I'm going to start with the endpoint detection and response. You'll notice that whenever I flip this switch, it's going to enable some of the anti-malware and URL filtering capabilities as well. And this is just giving you a summary that says in order for the EDR to work properly, it needs the these other functionalities enabled. So we'll just say enable here. And then these other modules are enabled as well. Moving on down from the EDR, we'll expand the anti-malware settings. And you're going to see some options here for things such as active protection, which is uh, protecting the local system against ransomware. And I'm quickly going to show you some of the options within these settings. Um, but we're trying to keep this uh, as a short uh, session. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going into each detail. Within active protection, you'll notice that the default action is revert using cache. That's a local cache on the system, and it is going to notify you and kill the process in addition to uh, reverting using cache. And you have this switch there that you can turn this off if you wanted to. The advanced anti-malware, it's gonna be enabled in order to use the, um, the advanced security pack there. Network folder protection, this is enabled, and this determines whether the anti-malware protection is going to uh, monitor network folders that are mapped as local drives and protect those. Uh, SMB and NFS are supported there. Server-side protection is very similar, but we're uh, protecting any of those network folders that are shared by you. Uh, from those incoming connections from other uh, devices or servers in the network that could uh, bring threats. And that's that's uh, server-side protection is turned off by default. You can turn that on if you'd like. The self-protection is a way to uh, prevent unauthorized modifications of processes, registry entries. Uh, executable files, configuration files, and the backup archives themselves. And you can enable the password protection here if you did want to um, approve those types of modifications, you would just have to enter the, that password. The crypto mining process detection, we're keeping our eyes out for applications or processes that are um, utilizing the local system resources to mine cryptocurrencies and killing that process as the default. You also notice the notification only option. And that same option is available on several of these um, security controls. So if we went back up to the active protection, for instance, you can see notify only. Um, same with our behavioral engine that shows quarantine as the default. You have the notify only mode. So that can be good if you're wanting to uh, run some samples against um, the security tools and test for detection that way without actually uh, stopping uh, or taking any action and, and stopping the processes. Um, I'm going to skip quarantine for now. Uh, we'll touch on that in an upcoming video. I did uh, briefly jump into the behavioral engine though, but th this is, uh, so with our um, anti-malware settings here, we're 
we offer both the signature-based detection as well as uh, behavioral-based detection. And um, that behavior engine you can see here is set to quarantine by default and it's enabled. So it uses hur heuristics to uh, identify malicious pro processes. The exploit prevention, you can see notify only, notify and stop the process. Uh, with exploit prevention, we're looking for things like buffer overflows with memory protection, the return-oriented programming, privilege escalation techniques, as well as code injection. And that is part of the, uh, the advanced security pack there, as well as the real-time protection. This is uh, going to do on-access and on-execution scanning of files on the system. Default action is quarantine. I can change that to block a notify or just notify only. Next, we have the scheduled scans. This is a quick, a full, and a custom scan. Um, the scheduling options are going to be very similar between the, the two of these. On the quick scan, we're really just looking for uh, commonly used uh, locations on the system um, related to uh, malware, you know, what, what these threat actors are, are typically using or these automated um, attacks. And um, when that quick scan is uh, running, you can choose you know, daily, choose your days, the time, default action. There are start conditions in here as well. If you're familiar with working with uh, schedules for anything else in the Acronis console, uh, the scheduling here is gonna look very familiar to you. Full scan schedule is gonna be the same type of settings here. Um, the difference is with the full scan, we're looking um, at the entire uh, uh, file structure on the, on the system, as opposed to just those uh, commonly um, accessed locations. And then you have a custom scan that you can set up as well for custom uh, locations and, and scheduling. And at the very bottom, we have the exclusions in the anti-malware section. And this is the ability to add trusted files, folders, and processes, as well as hashes, uh, or manually add blocked processes and hashes uh, to this protection plan. Let's collapse the anti-malware section for a moment and move on down to URL filtering. With URL filtering, we have the ability to for the user to specify whether or not they want to proceed to a um, as flagged malicious site. If you don't want the user to have the option, you could just block the connection and they won't be able to proceed. Or you could set it to notify only, um, as, as the same with uh, some of these other controls. We also have categories that you can filter by for allowing and denying certain categories of URLs. And there are many types of categories here. As you scroll down, you'll see more and more of those, uh, a lot of times, suspicious types of URLs. Exclusions that you can set for trusted domains and processes for URL filtering, as well as um, manually adding blocked domains. Underneath the URL filtering, you're going to see some Microsoft specific settings, such as Microsoft Defender Antivirus, Microsoft Security Essentials, and the Microsoft Defender Firewall. Now, these settings are really only applicable if you are utilizing these tools on the systems. You're not going to want to enable the Acronis anti-malware as well as the Microsoft Defender. It's one or the other. If you're not using Acronis and you wanted to use Defender and have those Defender settings applied to the systems as part of an Acronis protection plan, then you would turn this on and you'll have your Defender settings here that can be applied. Same with the security essentials. If we uh, enable this and expand it, you're gonna see those options. And similarly, we um, can enable the uh, Defender Firewall um, as part of this protection plan as well. So you can go in and turn that on or off. The last one that I wanted to touch on here, the security related um, for this session is the vulnerability assessment. 
if we enable this option, this is a scan that's running on the system for looking for out of date uh, applications or unpatched applications or operating systems. And you can click in here and choose um, you know, wh whether you're working with Windows machines as Microsoft OS and third party products, uh, Apple products and Mac OS, uh, as well as Linux packages. And that link in the documentation will uh, show you a full list of those uh, supported uh, third party products. And then the schedule on when you want this scan to run similar type of scheduling option as we saw before. And the vulnerability assessment actually ties into the automated patching, which is um, going to be covered in a separate video related to the advanced management functionality. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up this session here, and I will be back with you in other videos related to alerting incidents, investigation, remediation, and quarantine. Thanks for your time.